Kamala Harris. The kindest, bravest, warmest, most wonderful human being I've ever known in my life. Senator Kamala Harris, Joe Biden's vice presidential running mate, is a Manchurian candidate. Now, I don't mean to imply that she's controlled by communists, by the Chai Coms or the Russians or the North Koreans. No, she's the Manchurian candidate of the mainstream media elites. She was a candidate they liked at the beginning of the nomination process back in 2019. And they still like her, even though her campaign was a bomb, even though she didn't attract a lot of public attention, even though she didn't get a lot of votes, even though she didn't even survive long enough to get into the first uh, primary. But they still want her on the ticket. She's still their choice. And they're going to do everything they can to get her there and to protect her along the way. She's their candidate. She's a candidate, a Manchurian type candidate, the mainstream media elites. And you have to understand the mainstream media elite isn't sort of an extension of the Democrat Party. We've got that backwards. The Democrat Party is the media arm of the mainstream media elites, more broadly, the elites in this country. That's their political arm. And she's their candidate. And they're going to do everything they can to promote her and to protect her along the way. She's their Manchurian candidate. The media loved Senator Harris. They wanted her as their candidate. And despite the fact that her campaign was a, a disaster, really, if you go back and you look at it, she didn't even make it to the primaries. She was gone before that. She had a brief moment where she was up in the polls when she attacked, of all people, Joe Biden. I do not believe you are a racist. And I agree with you when you commit yourself to the importance of finding common ground. Mm -hmm. But I also believe, and it's personal, and it, I was actually very, it was hurtful, to hear you talk about the reputations of two United States senators who built their reputations and career on the segregation of race in this country. And it was not only that, but you also worked with them to oppose busing. Look, everything I've done in my career, I ran because of civil rights. I continue to think we have to make fundamental changes in civil rights. And those civil rights, by the way, include not just only African-Americans, but the LGBT community. But they, uh, Vice President Biden, do you agree today? Do you agree today? that you were wrong to oppose busing in America. Then. No, Do you agree? I did not oppose busing in America. What I opposed is busing ordered by the Department of Education. That's what I opposed. Well, I there did was not a oppose. failure of, of states to, to integrate no, public schools in America. I was part of the second it, class to integrate Berkeley, it, California public schools almost two decades after Brown v. Board of Education. Because your city council made that decision. It was a so local that's decision. where the federal government must step the, in. The that's federal why we have the Voting Rights Act and the Civil Rights Act. That's why we need to pass the Equality Act. That's why we need to pass the ERA, because that there works. are moments in history where states fail to preserve the civil rights of all people. Support. But after that, she quickly went down into single digits again. And despite this showing, despite the fact that her campaign was a bust, they're still putting her on the ticket. And you have to wonder why. It's a completely legitimate question, although just don't ask it, because if you do ask it, you'll just be accused of being a sexist or a racist or sexist and a racist. Well, Joe Biden in the past has, talks, has talked about being a bridge to the next generation. And what we see here is not so much a bridge, but somebody who is embracing the next generation, who has said, I'm going to be transformational by choosing a black woman as my vice president. And, and by the way, in doing this, the Democratic Party is sort of saying, OK, well, and Biden is saying, you know, you're the next likely nominee, no matter when it comes, because you've served uh, as vice president should they win. And I think what Biden is doing is a larger thing. It's not a bridge anymore. This has become uh, more of a transformation. He is saying to black voters in this country, I am listening to you. He is saying to young voters who want to see something different, 
I am listening to you. And he's also got a partner here, I would argue, she's been tough on crime, but she understands the issues and she is going to have to uh, deal with police reform, criminal justice reform. And just as he did the Recovery Act when he was vice president, maybe he's thinking, well, Kamala Harris can help me in the way that I helped Barack Obama. So I think this is a huge moment uh, for this campaign. And I also think um, my colleagues have reminded me that a couple of weeks ago, Donald Trump was asked the question, how do you rate Kamala Harris as VP? Mm -hmm. And the answer was, I think she'd be a fine choice, Kamala Harris. Hmm. She'd be a fine choice. So we have to see what Donald Trump is going to have to do to her. So we're going we'll to try to, to do to her. Let's put it that way. Right. We'll see. We'll see. And and just talking about her record, um, as we pointed out, she was district attorney in San Francisco, attorney general in California. Her record will no doubt be under scrutiny. But uh, given the race reckoning in this nation, David Chally, and she has recently advocated for police reform. She pushed a Senate bill to make lynching a federal crime. Um, and also, let's not forget, she's relatively young. She's 55 years old. What is the significance? of that. Well, uh, the man she's running with of uh, the ticket <laughs> is uh, significantly older than that. I think that's the significance of it, Pam, is that uh, he's going to be 78 years old uh, this fall. And uh, obviously that added sort of to the weight of this pick. Is he going to, as he has called himself, a transitional figure uh, in this moment in time? And, and will this pick be part of that vision? Well, with somebody who is in her mid-50s, it does seem a, a bit of torch passing going on here, at least uh, bringing along the next generation of leadership uh, with him. Th that There's no doubt about that. To your point about her record, uh, and as Jeff Zeleny was talking and, and Gloria was just mentioning the uh, criminal justice piece of this, this is also one of the reasons that Joe Biden selected Kamala Harris. The vetting of that record, which no doubt is going to happen all over again, it's a whole new context when you are now on the national ticket, but this was litigated throughout her entire presidential campaign. So she didn't run a successful presidential campaign for the Democratic nomination and bowed out last December before the voting even began. But all of these issues about her votes, her past, her record uh, on, uh, on criminal justice and other areas, this is something she's had a year plus mm -hmm. worth of practice uh, answering. And I think with some folks on the list who did not have that kind of national spotlight exposure, uh, this ended up being on the plus column for a Kamala Harris. What else do we know about this population, 18 through 24? They are stupid. <laughs> that is why we put them in dormitories and they have a resident assistant. They make really bad decisions. Because this is going to be played and replayed and replayed and replayed. Now, people say different things about running mates during campaigns, and I understand that. But compare what she said to uh, Joe Biden about Joe Biden's record to what Joe Biden, who ended up becoming Barack Obama's vice presidential candidate, said about Barack Obama during his campaign back in 2007, 2008. I mean, you got the first sort of mainstream African American yeah. who is articulate and bright and, and, and clean and nice looking guy. I mean, it's, that's a story, man. Yeah. Biden later called Obama and then spoke to reporters during a conference call saying Obama understood what he meant. This is a guy who's come along in a way that's captured the imagination of the country in a way that no one else has. That was the point of everything I was saying. But late today, Obama released this statement saying, quote, I didn't take Senator Biden's comments personally, but obviously they were historically inaccurate. Obama adds, African-American presidential candidates like Jesse Jackson, Shirley Chisholm, Carol Mosley Braun, and Al Sharpton gave a voice to many important issues through their campaigns, and no one would call them inarticulate. Civil rights leader Jesse Jackson tonight. It was a gaffe. It was not an intentional racial pejorative statement. It could be interpreted that way, but 
It's not what they meant. Biden, who admits he has a tendency to bloviate, has made indelicate remarks before. Last year, speaking about Indian Americans. From India, you cannot go to a 7-Eleven or a Dunkin' Donuts unless you have a slight Indian accent. So fully, I'm not joking. Biden's first presidential run 20 years ago was undone after evidence emerged that he plagiarized a speech from a British politician, Neil Kennett. In the interview with the New York Observer, Biden also came out swinging against his rivals over the war. This about John Edwards, who wants to remove troops from Iraq immediately. Okay, John, what about the chaos of World War II? Do we have any interest, John, left in the region? And this about Senator Hillary Clinton's plan to put a cap on U.S. forces now in Iraq. Cap our troops and withdraw support from the Iraqis. Now, that's a real good idea. I'm not being a wise guy. No, no. No response tonight from either Senator Edwards or Senator Clinton. But for his part, Senator Biden, obviously fearing the political backlash of all this, has released a statement tonight saying, quote, I deeply regret any offense my remark in the New York Observer might have caused anyone. That was not my intent. And I express that to Senator Obama, end quote. Brian. David Gregory in Washington for us tonight. Thanks. CNBC's chief Washington correspondent, John Harwood, is here with us in our New York studios tonight. John, as you and I were saying before the broadcast, this is a story about Joe Biden, make no mistake, but also about generational language and race and politics. How big does this get? Is there any telling? Brian, there are so many things unique about this campaign. Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton both could make history, but that puts their rivals in the position of trying to stop that history from being made. The result of that is that their words and their tactics are going to be subject to extraordinary scrutiny. Now, as for Joe Biden, it's easy to convict Joe Biden of having a loose tongue. It's not so easy to convict him of racial insensitivity on the basis of his public career. But this is a delicate issue because Democrats like to think of themselves as on the progressive side of race and gender issues. So now Joe Biden's in the position of so many Republicans before who've said, no, I really didn't mean anything by it. And Brian, from the interest of the party as a whole, one year of primary infighting is an awfully long time to leave a trail of sound bites for your other party to take advantage of. But Republicans have exactly the same problem, and they're also trying to juggle loyalties to an unpopular president. John Harwood here with us in New York tonight. John, thank you for that. And Furthermore, she also said that she believed the women accusing Joe Biden of sexual harassment. She's on record as saying that. Here's the audio. The question for you is, as somebody who has a relationship with Vice President Biden, what message would you give to the women who feel like their space has been invaded in the past by the I believe them, and I, I respect um, them being able to tell their story and having the courage to do it. Do you believe that the vice president should enter this race? Oh, I, he's going to have to make that decision for himself. By the way, come to think of it, have you heard anything about any of those cases lately? Once Joe Biden got the nomination, it was like it all went away. I don't see any stories. I don't hear any stories. I don't hear any discussion. What happened to all these women? What happened to their accusations? How come the press isn't following up on this? Well, stupid question. We know why the press isn't following up on this. Now, the media wants us to believe that their Manchurian candidate is a super pick. Despite the fact that she said nasty things about Joe Biden, despite the fact that she performed horribly on the campaign trail. But they still insist she's just a wonderful pick. But the extent to which this is a debacle is pretty obvious if you think about it for a second. What did Joe Biden say before he picked her? He said he was going to pick a woman of color, which he did. Kamala Harris. But that's the problem. What he should have done if he wanted to pick a woman of color was just to pick one. Pick Kamala Harris and say he picked her because she's the best candidate out there. Male, female, black, white, yellow, brown, red, doesn't matter. She's the best person to be by my side in this campaign and to take over the reins of power of president just in case something happens to me, which is highly likely in his case. But when he came out ahead of time and announced that he was going to pick a woman of color, he immediately demeaned her. Everybody knows that she's an affirmative action pick. She wasn't picked because she's the best person. She was picked because she's a woman of color. Maybe she's the best woman of color he could have picked. 
That's a debatable proposition. But to go and telegraph that, to announce beforehand that he was going to pick a woman of color, was really stupid. And I think anybody with a brain understands that it was stupid. And again, I'm not saying it was stupid to pick her. That's not the point. The point is, if you're going to pick her, pick her and just say you picked her because she's good, not because she's a woman of color or a good woman of color. Basically, he demeaned his own vice presidential pick before he even selected Senator Harris. Another reason her pick was questionable has to do with what's happening in the country right now. Every night, there are problems in Portland, there are problems in Seattle, there are problems in other cities. The progressive left is pushing for police reform, defunding of the police, disestablishment of police forces, reimagining policing in this country. So who do they have running on their ticket? Joe Biden, one of the fathers of the crime bill back in the 1990s, and Kamala Harris, who was attacked on the campaign trail for her record as a prosecutor in San Francisco and in California. So you have, at this time, seems to me, a really questionable ticket of people who are enforcing the law and using police powers and talking about using police powers at a time when their own party is trying to do away with the use of police powers. Does this make a lot of sense? Is, is it just me who seems that there's a disconnect here? I don't think so. If you look on Twitter and you look at what some people on the left are saying, they're outraged by this. Joe Biden was bad enough, but pairing her with cop Kamala is even worse. And I would add, it's not like she's going to bring California to the ticket. Biden was going to carry California no matter what. He didn't need to pick somebody from California to secure California. It would have been nice to pick somebody from maybe an African-American woman from somewhere in the South that could have helped him somewhere in places like Georgia or in other states. But California, the Democrats are going to win California no matter who's on the ticket. They didn't need to shore that up. In that sense, she's a wasted pick. So again, I would ask, why did he pick her? Why is she on the ticket? She ran a horrible campaign. She attracted very little of the vote. She was running at single digits when she quit. She had trouble raising money. She didn't even make the first debate. Recent polls show that about a third of African Americans are less likely to vote for the ticket with her on it. You have the, the hard left anti-police wing of the progressives who are outraged by her being on the ticket alongside Crime Bill Joe. She's not going to help him win California. So why is she there? And again, that comes back to my original point. She's the beloved candidate of the mainstream media. They loved her before the campaign started. They love her now. They wanted her on the ticket the whole time. And now they've got her there. Senator Kamala Harris is the Manchurian candidate of the media elites in this country. It's that simple. That's why she's there. And they're going to do everything they can to promote her and everything they can to protect her. And that includes brainwashing. And we've seen it already on the media. You turn on the news, she's the greatest candidate ever. Nobody's ever been better than her. What a great pick. She's a strong leader. She's this, she's that, she's the future. She's everything wrapped up in one person, one person who couldn't attract above single digits when she ran for president herself. Does that make a lot of sense? Of course, it makes no sense, but it doesn't matter because there she is. And all you have to know, all you have to keep in mind is the simple let's redo shot nine. Her choice doesn't make a lot of sense, but it doesn't matter. As I said, they wanted her before, they wanted her now, and they got her. So they're going to do everything they can to protect her. And all you need to do as an American citizen is just keep in mind who she is, what she represents, and that she must be protected at all costs. So when anyone raises questions about her, all you need to remember to say is that 
Kamala Harris. The kindest, bravest, warmest, most wonderful human being I've ever known in my life. I'd like to know what you think. Leave a comment. Why do you think she was picked? What do you think she represents? Do you think she strengthens the ticket? Do you think she undermines the ticket? Let me know. I'd love to hear from you. And if you got something out of this video, uh, please give it a like, give it you know, a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends, hit the notification buttons so you'll know when I post new videos. And until the next time, keep fighting.